And here we go, study guide section, basic camera operation. So, if you want to travel light and the DSLR is too heavy, what camera is a good choice? Anyone know what they call it? A point and shoot. So the difference between a DSLR and a point and shoot is the DSLR has the lens on it. I guess I should pull one out. You guys already know this, but just for posterity, the DSLR has the removable lens. That honking thing, in this case, that probably weighs by itself about three or four pounds. Yeah, three pounds probably. And it has all that mirror apparatus in here. Okay, so it makes it heavier and typically a bigger battery. And so this guy is kind of bulky. I don't know if I would just kind of carry this around with me. Like if I'm going on a hike or if I'm going jogging around the track. I don't think I would, right? But if, I'm, uh, if I would just want to throw something in, like some of you guys are driving, if I just want to throw something in my glove box in my car, I would probably take a point and shoot camera. Who has a point and shoot camera like that? All right. You can get those for around 50 bucks. So it's good to have one of those that's really handy if you're going, again, backpacking, hiking, you want to travel light. Okay, you guys already know this one. That button right there, what do you actually call that? Not the button or not the pressy thing or whatever, what do you call it? Shutter release button. Oh, the shutter release button. Correct, you are. Who remembers if I push it halfway down, what does it do? Film it. Well, no, well that's probably true too. It actually measures the light and focuses for you, so I want you to all to be in the habit of that, just a reminder. When you first get ready to shoot, you just push it halfway down and then actually take the shot. The hole you look through to see your subject. Okay, so you've got this and this. They are actually called two different things. What do you call this part? The viewfinder. Oh, and I keep forgetting I was... Uh, Tempest, we have some foreign exchange students that need some spelling. I am sorry, guys. I couldn't possibly, yeah, and you, I couldn't possibly spell it in Chinese, so I can't expect them to spell uh, it. Which ones? Let's do, uh, yeah, let's button. do all of them. Shutter release <coughs> button and uh, view finder. You can call it the LCD screen, I really don't care, but the correct term is the display, at least as far as the state is concerned. When you actually want to see what's on the display, like you're looking through the lens, do you guys know what you have to do? The play. That little lever there, right? On this camera, the lever does live view. So the term is live view. Okay. What is going on? There we go. So this shows me my settings or shows me what picture I'm taking, which you guys can't see. Yes, and I can't see either. Hmm. Lens cap. Okay, so that's live view. <laughs> Some cameras have like a little button. In fact, on the more professional cameras, there's like a little button that you can kind of like just push with your thumb or something. What do you adjust to make your picture more sharp? Do you guys know where your focus ring is? Yep. So you have, do I have it there? Yeah, so you have a zoom ring and a focus ring. On most of your camera lenses, the focus ring is actually the outer one, but on this one, you have the zoom ring here and the focus ring right here. This camera came with a really crappy, I think it was all three of our black cameras, the red ones came with better lenses. This camera came with a really crappy lens, and so we swapped it out with a really good lens. So it kind of made up for the people that started out half the year and had a really crappy lens. What am I doing right here then? Zooming. So we have a zoom lens and a focus ring. So on this one I got the zoom ring and I got the focus ring. You use them both. Let you have everything done in automatic. Also on this camera, we have the A and the M. Actually, all of them have it. You can have it set to A or M. I always wanted an M right now while you're practicing. There would be a reason to have it in automatic. M is manual. Leave it in manual. And then adjust your own focus and your zoom. Okay. What does pressing the shutter button halfway down do? I just told you. Focus and measure the light. Focus and measure the light. Paul Andre is correct. Uh, I'll show you that another time. Okay, just cranking through this. We have no more questions. There we go. Who? Oh, what's that called? Button. <laughs> the button. No, I wanted y'all to remember what that's mode called. Dial. The mode dial. Again, teaching you like kindergartners. Say it one more time. What's it called? Mode dial. Once you get it actually said, you supposedly remember it better. Okay, let's go through it. 
we go through all the mode dial this time. What does that do? Focuses on the Why do I remember this already? Because we did it. We did we did a quick run through on Tuesday. And auto mode means that it does everything for you. It's automatic, including if it's low light, what does it do? Right? It's gonna flash. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And if I don't want it to flash, what do I do? Put no flash. Okay. And once you get into manual mode, you'll adjust all that, but you can do that on any camera. Remember what that mode's called by any chance? Portrait. Good job. We type in portrait for me. Okay, which one? The oh, next one is portrait and it's the lady with the hat. That's pretty universal, by the way. Almost all cameras have that same icon. And the next one is very universal. Okay. Landscape. Landscape. Let's talk about portrait for one second, though. What do you notice about the characteristics of that photo? Right, she got exactly right. So the idea is that it pulls focus on your subject and it puts everything else out of focus. That's extremely out of focus. Let's look at the bride here. We don't even know what those are. Are those lights or those UFOs? We don't even know. It's out of focus. Okay. What do you call this one with the mountains? Landscape. Landscape. Tempest is doing a great job of being your scribe, isn't she? Okay, so what do you see about the focus on that baby? Everything's in. Everything's in focus to infinity and beyond. Okay. Okay, so is that pine tree in focus and that cliff in focus? Yes. So it must be what mode? Landscape. You got it. When shooting sports, what icon on the mode dial should you use to freeze the action? You call it the runner, but it can be called sports mode, runner mode, it's the runner icon, burst, continuous, I've also heard it called rapid fire. So it looks like, a, well, you know what, scroll back to that, let me, let me see the mode dial. That dude running upside down. Again, that's pretty universal. And do you know what it does? Did we already talk about that? Say it again. So that's how you avoid motion blur, but you can also do this, like hold it down one time, right? So depending on the amount of light, uh, it takes continuous photos. As a matter of fact, I've always wanted to do this. So I'm going to point to the light right here. And because it's letting a lot of light in, it will take faster photos. So let's kind of count how many in like a second here. That's probably like 10. Now I'm going to go in the dark, and it's going to try to adjust, but it won't be able to open and close the shutter as fast and still get a good image. Let's see how many it takes this time. Like maybe four. Isn't that kind of cool? Whoever camera this is, you got a lot of good photos. Don't waste them. So it does freeze the action, no motion blur, and it takes a bunch of photos. Where else would you use this besides sports? Okay, who's my runway model? I was going to say model. Yes. Tempest, do you want to be a runway model today? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> so that's when you hear it all the time, too. You also hear it at press conferences. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to learn some more technical stuff. We get even more technical than this, but this is your first real experience with something technical that is really cool. It's the science of running a camera. The hole that allows light coming in through the lens, who knows what it's called? Aperture. Aperture, aperture, aperture. Okay, that's how you spell it. Okay, so back behind the lens, you actually have an opening that you can open. See, I'm trying to make it like I'm opening and closing. You can open and close that. That hole, they call it the aperture, allows light in. And now you start getting into some science, which I'm not going to make you learn a lot right now, but I am just going to explain this really quick. It helps you control your depth of field, so the focus. So when we say depth of field, we're saying, is just this in focus, and then everything out here starts going out of focus? Or is the whole thing in focus, your depth of field? So it's a shallow or a large depth of field. If I'm in portrait mode, am I in shallow or large depth of field? Shallow, right? Because I'm just getting the one person in focus. If I'm in landscape mode, shallow or large depth of field? Large. Large, okay? So that's what we're doing. When we go to manual mode, we set the aperture and we decide how much is going to be in focus. And it's also how much light you're letting into the camera. If I have my aperture stopped way down small, I'm not letting in very much light, so I have to compensate with other things. I've got to either put more light on something or I've got to change my shutter priority. But first, that A on the mode dial, that A does not stand for auto, it stands for aperture. 
So it's your aperture priority. And um, DOF is how you abbreviate depth of field. The other thing is, when it's aperture priority, you're controlling the aperture. The camera does everything else automatically. So it's a good mode. I just think you might as well shoot in manual mode and do everything yourself. But if you only want to control your depth of field, okay, so I only want to get Evane in focus, right? Then I put it on aperture priority mode, and I adjust my aperture setting, and only Evane is in focus. <coughs> okay, moving down. Kind of cranking through it. Yeah, let's talk about this. This is a good example. Okay, so if I have my setting, and this is all new to you, I don't expect you to actually remember any of this. But it's going to start to make sense the more we say about it, the more we talk about it. And it'll be days, okay? You're going to get this over days, not over minutes. But if you had your f-stop setting at 1.8, then you've got a very shallow depth of field. Only that much is in focus. Everything else is before it and after it, right? And I can change that, too. I can have Genesee in focus, and then I can move it back, and I can have Andrea in focus, right? But in this particular photo, they've just got the flower in focus. We have no idea what's going on back there. I'm pretty sure there's a terrorist bombing going on in the background, but we can't see it because someone made their f-stop setting so shallow we can't see anything back there. Scary, huh? I'm just kidding. Then we make it a little bit more depth of focus, and we can start to tell, oh, Maybe there's something in the background. Until you get to the point, we're in a park, and look, there's some people back there. Of course, now they've walked away. And now we're closer to what you'd call landscape mode, okay? That's all adjusted by changing your aperture setting, which changes that depth of field. So that's why the aperture setting mode, aperture priority mode, is pretty cool. The camera did all the rest. The camera did all the, uh, the adjustment for the lights for you and everything like that, but you changed that focus. Okay, S. Anyone know what the S is on the mode dial? Shutter. Okay. So now we're in shutter priority. Priority. We were just talking about uh, the sports mode that it freezes the action. It's how fast you leave your shutter open that determines how much motion blur you're going to get. So if I have a really fast shutter speed, I have captured the motion really quickly. All right. So that could be a spinning wheel. But I wouldn't know it. It looks like it's just sitting there because it captured it so fast there's no motion blur. If I have it open for, let's just call it a half a second for argument's sake. If I have it open for a half a second, I see some of the motion blur because it's been left open long enough for that pinwheel to go around 30 times. And then if I have a really slow uh, shutter speed, then the pinwheel's gone around maybe 100 times and it's looking really blurry. Would you ever want it to be blurry on purpose? <laughs> Yes, if you want that look. You may even in the sports mode, I, we do this sometimes for fun. A guy shooting a free throw, we actually have a slower shutter speed and you see the stream of the orange ball going into the hoop or in soccer you see the ball getting kicked and there's like kind of a white streak. If you want to do that for fun, it looks cool. My favorite thing is to do a waterfall. You ever seen waterfall pictures where the water coming down looks all kind of schmeary? That's motion blur. That's a word I actually heard from someone. Shmiri is actually one of our vocabulary words. Just kidding. Moving on. And then one mode that I almost never use is program. Program mode, and I'm just going to say this because I don't want to spend any time on it, quite frankly. Uh, it does some of the things for you automatically. There are probably some professionals that use it a lot. It's kind of a hybrid between manual and automatic settings, but if you're going to be shooting in manual mode anyway, I don't think program mode is that useful. You just need to know that the P on the mode dial stands for program. That's all I'm going to teach you in basic photography. Okay, if you shoot in auto mode and low light, what feature will the camera engage? One more time. The pop-up flash. I know I've told you this a million times. What does the portrait mode do to the aperture? You get to write these in, by the way. You just write in however you want to phrase it. You can write literally word for word. It's up to you. So the aperture, if you're in portrait mode, opens it wide. And that's the science that I'm not going to explain a lot today, but that's what it does. If you're in manual mode and you want a shallow depth of field, you open it wide. If you want a great depth of field, you stop it way down. Okay. 
So those are the two there that wrap you up for today, the portrait mode and the landscape mode. And I think I ask you to draw the circles, don't I? Is that what it says up there? Yeah, draw two pictures of the size of the aperture for the following settings, portrait mode and landscape mode. So if you're in portrait mode, just remember you open it up wide, so draw a wide open circle. If you're in landscape mode, the science is you stop it way down, and that puts everything in focus. Let's try to get that down today. That's the only thing you need to really worry about for the science. So I'm going to just say it again to you, and let's see if you got it. If it's portrait mode, is my aperture wide open or stopped down? If I only want a little bit in focus, wide open. Okay. Landscape mode then, stop down. Okay, which mode gives me a shallow depth of field? Portrait mode. Okay, I get a shallow depth of field. How do I get that shallow depth of field with the aperture? What do I do with my aperture? Do I stop it down or open it wide? Open it wide to get just a shallow depth of field. Only this much is in focus. Okay. Are your, uh, are your minds grasping this concept? All right, good. Okay, we'll call it good.